now. Okay, congratulations um, for winning this award of the Five Hills Award, basically for best international short here at Old F. And we've got Maria Clinton and Alison Otto here, who are both the co-directors and cinematographers and producers of The Love Bugs. And I'm just going to get straight into the first question. Um, what was your favorite memory and the most challenging task within this project? So favorite and maybe something that's, that was a little bit more challenging. Well, I'll let you go. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, that's a great question. I think I'll start with my favorite. My favorite memory was of spending time with Lois and Charlie um, and watching them discover so many new species. Uh, and it became so commonplace for them, but it was a phenomenal moment for me to see continuously. I think in terms of challenges, it was the scope of the project once Allison and I realized that it wasn't just going to be one film shoot, that it was going to be something that um, continued on for some time. So just wrapping my mind around that and uh, knowing that there was a great story to tell. So that there was excitement in that, but just also readjusting um, in that framework. Yeah, I think my favorite part was just kind of like the the daily interactions with um especially with well with charlie because he he would do all these things that were kind of funny but he didn't realize that they were humorous until you see them on film and i think one of my favorite interactions that made it into the film was the moment where they're sitting on the couch and they're talking about um death and charlie has that or lois has that little guidebook um, about all the things she's supposed to do in preparation for death and just their their interaction was so so funny and so indicative of a couple that's been together for what, 55 years um, and I think that to me was a very humorous moment and then as far as like the biggest challenge uh, I would agree with with Mariah that um, it was the change in scope of the project because we originally were thinking that it would be like a five minute film and we would be there for just a couple days filming. We start um, get to know them on that first shoot. We realized that it was a much bigger, uh, more profound story and that we would do it more justice if it were, um, if we spent time with them over the course of a year. So I kept having to, um, come back and, and film and Mariah was on the East Coast, so it was more challenging for her. Um, but I ended up going down there in total seven times over the course of a year and, and filming. And then the scope of, you know, the animations grew and the illustrations and the music, it became much bigger than we originally intended. Yeah, well, I had no idea it started as a much smaller project and then evolved into what it is now. That's, that's really interesting. Um, also for everyone else to know, I mean, it's, it's this idea of a little passion sparking uh, an idea that becomes something big and moves so many people. So yeah, really interesting. Um, since we're in an environmental film festival, I have to ask about um, of course, the insects. <laughs> so you didn't necessarily um, dive deep into the issue of a declining insect population worldwide and the effects that it has on the balance of ecosystems. But you have created classroom, like a classroom toolkit, I believe, for schools on the topic of the nature of love and the love of nature. And what motivated you to take this approach? Do you want to... Um, one of the things Allison and I were grappling with when we d decided that we wanted to film, so Allison found out about the story first and shared it with me, and then I headed down from the East Coast. One of the things we were thinking about is the balance between both nature and humanity um, and finding a way to tell a story about the O'Briens that made them humans, you know, not just, not that scientists aren't humans, of course they are, 
but showing the audience that the, they had a life outside of that also and giving them a full scope of that life and also balancing the fact that their collection was a really big deal at the same time. Um, so I think that within the film, you'll, you'll see that there's this desire to, to focus on the fact that their collection has great reach and um, a lot is going to happen as a result of it for the field of entomology. Um, or actually it's going to affect the field of entomology greatly, but also the fact that Charlie and Lois are relatable, they're humorous and um, they're great people to be around. In terms of the educational component, that was something that was really brought about and well thought out with the Far Star Action Fund. They wanted an educational component to the film and it was my desire and Allison, your desire is well to, to see the reach of the film for young people. Um, so they really helped to work to bring that to fruition. And then PBS also became involved with their own components as well. Yeah, and to, to build on that, I think with a lot of environmental films, one of the reasons those films struggle to um, connect with people is that they don't, sometimes they don't have um, a, a human component that makes them uh, relatable to audiences, um, a really strong characters. And that's kind of what we wanted to um, pull in there is um, Lois and Charlie's characters were so strong and so relatable. And it made people um, with audiences, it made them more, it made the story more compelling. And in turn, that makes people more uh, sympathetic to uh, the plight of insects rather than just showing um, insects in their natural habitat one after another after another um, or just showing images of the collection and how it's um, being distributed it kind of becomes much uh, a much drier film if we were to have done that um, yes and as far as the uh, educational component um, yeah we the Far Star Action Fund really wanted to create these free resources, free curriculums for, for teachers um, to download, especially now during COVID, um, and as a way to teach children about entomology and what's out there and um, that there really are people that study insects and why insects are so uh, valuable. So it's an opportunity for children to dive deeper into something that um, wasn't explored in, in its full depth in the film itself. Yeah, great. And, sorry, just to add Laura Tucker, right, Allison? Laura Tucker yeah. was responsible for the curriculum, the original curriculum. Yeah, and she worked with Far Star Action Fund. She's a teacher herself. So she, she crafted those curriculums and they're really, really cool. Yeah, and I saw that it's available in Spanish as well, which is great, it reaches a much bigger audience. That's fantastic. And we're also big fans of collaborations. And since you are co-directors, I was wondering what you would recommend others who are maybe playing with the idea of co-directing a film rather than doing it on their own. What's your advice? Yeah, it's, um, it was, a my first time co-directing with somebody. And um, I think it's, it, it's important to really um, sit down with, like with Mariah and we talk a lot about kind of um, the creative balance of it and um, kind of merging our visions for it. it uh, it's always something I think co-directors need to do. <laughs> they're gonna be, if they're gonna be successful and you have to make compromises and, um, and just really listen to what the other person is saying and what skills they're bringing to the table. So Mariah, do you want it? No, I thought that was great. I think every person has their strengths and everyone comes to the project with their own level of expertise. Um, and really focusing on people's strong points is a, is a good way to approach co-directing because you're human, people are going to sometimes have different perspectives but if you focus on the fact that, okay, this person is really good at this and this person is really good at that and try to find a way to balance and merge those two uh, things, 
I, it makes for a, a great team. And it can also be lonely in filmmaking, especially with COVID now. So I think if you can find a, a great co-director and someone that you can trust and that you can have a meaning of the minds with, it, it's nice to have. Yeah, and I think one of Mariah's biggest strengths is that she's really um, good at, at seeing a story arc and, and what makes yes. the character compelling and, um, and you know why articulating why we shouldn't just focus on the scientific aspects of, of what the O'Briens were doing. And Allison, I'll add to that. I, I think she has a great mind when it comes to visual storytelling, which I don't think we talk about like with each other, our strengths a lot um, to each other, but she does have a great mind in terms of mapping out something visually. And I don't know if you know that, but I get like, when I think of Allison thinking about a project, I think of her mind like already seeing it brought to fruition and she has the stages already aligned. So <laughs> it, it, it's nice to work with someone who's, who's very visually strong or like aesthetically strong in terms of knowing their voice when they approach a project because it can guide you along in that process. Yeah, great. That was amazing to hear. I think your positivity and just appreciation for each other also shines through in the project. So <laughs> that, was, that was great. Um, finally, before I let you go, I was interested in knowing what's the biggest lesson that you're walking away with. So um, this can be related to the process, the story itself. What's the biggest lesson you're taking away from it? Mm. I need a moment to think about that. <laughs> Mariah, are you? <laughs> I, th I think the value of insects, I tend to tell people a lot, being in New York um, and not growing up in an environment, I they have moments around nature, but I wouldn't say per se, insects were a big part of my upbringing. Um, and, you know, valuing them and appreciating them more something that's changed in my life. I also think being more conscious of my contribution to climate change is something I'm more aware of now because working on a film that's dealing with biodiversity and ecosystems uh, affected me in terms of the new content I began to watch um, and made me reflect on, okay, you know, you have a part in this too. So overall, I, I definitely look at insects with a new appreciation and I look for insects then I notice beautiful insects a lot more than I would have in the past. I'll stop and watch them. Um, so that was my takeaway. Yeah, I think I had a similar takeaway in, in just being able to recognize um, the beauty of insects. I'd filmed them before and I, I loved insects before I'd done um, stories for, for National Geographic about them, but um, never to the extent where I was looking at multiple species at one time and seeing, you know, collection from all over the world. And um, once I saw that, the scope of that, it really, it intensified my, my love for insects. Um, and then I think the other thing um, was just that how to navigate a project with so much, uh, so many moving parts, um, you know, because we had to really get involved in, in the what the animation was going to look like and what the illustrations and what the music would look like. And then what the what the outreach of the film itself would be and, you know, navigating how all of these parts come together and then now how they're all, how it's all being transmitted to, to people around the world and um, keeping on top of all of that is, was I think, is a map, you know, it's a master class in, in learning how to how to um, distribute a film and get it out there and everything that has to come together in order for it to be successful and, and resonate with people. Yeah, a lot of learning by doing, by the sounds of it. And this is inspired <laughs> one more question. What's your favorite insect? I really like the, the one that appears at the very beginning of the film. It's the, the giraffe weevil. Mm. Um, it has, it's, you see it in the illustration, the fir very first illustration. It's the um, insect with the red 
carapace, and then it's got the really long black neck, um, which makes it look like a, a giraffe. And that one to me was the most, the most fascinating. And oh, I forgot one other one. There is a uh, a new beetle that um, that scientists are studying. That its carapace is so strong that you could um, someone can run over it. Um, with a car and it'll, it'll survive. And so now they're looking at that carapace in terms of um, how they can design, you know, stronger structures for armor and, and things like that. And that's one of the ways that you see insects study, the studying of insects translates into, um, into what humans can do. So I love that one too. Wow, <laughs> amazing. That is, I like, I really like the clown weevil. That's, that's the one that I, I find I often tend to want to look at it over and over again. Okay, great. I, I like that you also stuck with the ones from your film. <laughs> you really, I guess you really developed the connection. <laughs> the I did. <laughs> um, which makes a lot of sense. You spend a lot of time on them, so. Um, that's it from my side. Thank you so much for making the time. And again, congratulations. Um, this is, uh, as far as I know, the, the only award you've won for the film so far. And again, we've all enjoyed it a lot and hope our audience will as well. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.